If you're watching this video, then chances are you've watched all of these stats and extracurriculars videos, and maybe even some college decision reaction ones too. And you're probably wondering, well, I didn't cure cancer or start 27 different charities or have 13 ISIFs under my belt, so how am I gonna make it? Well, I didn't do any of those things either, and I still made it into all of these schools and two BSMD programs. So without further ado, let's get into my stats and extracurriculars. So first off my grades, but I think I need to add a little bit of context beforehand. I went to a private IB high school that only did IB, no APs. So I did the MIP program in 9th and 10th grade and then the DP program in 11th and 12th. Our grades were also calculated on a semester-based schedule. To calculate our weighted GPA, we had to go through a really weird process. So I'm not going to include my weighted GPA or how to calculate it. I'm just gonna show my grades and then include my unweighted GPA after. So here are my freshman year grades. We were required to do PE and one arts elective, which I chose to be music. I was also given the opportunity to accelerate my French. So instead of being in the ninth grade French class, I was in the 10th grade French class as a freshman. And I was in the highest level of math that my school offered. Here are my sophomore year grades. I was in junior French as a sophomore. I took music and econ as my two electives. And I was in the highest level of math, physics, and chemistry that my school offered. So here are my junior year grades. 11th grade is when DP starts, and typically students take three higher level or HL courses and three standard level or SL courses. But at my school, you're offered the opportunity to take four HLs and two SLs if you've proven that you can handle an academically rigorous schedule, which is what I personally did. So I did HL English, HL Psychology, HL Biology, and HL Chemistry, with my SLs being SL Mathematics, Analysis and Approaches, and then SL French 12, which carried over from my sophomore year. So I was able to sit my IB exam early during the May 2024 cycle and be done with French. We also have to take TOK, which is Theory of Knowledge, and in my school, it's the second semester of your junior year and first semester of your senior year, so TOK is also included here. And finally, here are my first semester senior year grades, and I can't include the second semester because I myself don't know what they are because the portal to access our report cards is not working for anyone. I'm pretty sure I got all A's, but can't show you that. Uh, still the same English, Psych, Bio, Chem, and Math. And again, I graduated French a year early and I still have TOK. So overall, I was in the top 5% of my graduating class and I think my class rank was six, but we don't really do class rank, so I'm not entirely sure. And my unweighted GPA was a 4.0 out of a 4.0. So now moving on to standardized testing. I took both the ACT and the SAT three times each. On my ACT, I got a 34 in one sitting, so a 32 math, 33 science, and 35 on both English and reading, and my super score was a 35, so I'll just put them here. On my SAT, I got a 1500 with 750s in both English and math, and I got a 1510 as my super score. Editing Kathy here, I forgot to mention that I only submitted my single sitting ACT to all of my colleges. I didn't submit my super score or any of my SAT scores. If y'all would like a video explaining how I studied for my SAT and my ACT, I'd love to make one. I'll just talk about my tips and tricks that I learned along the way, so comment below if you want one. I also self-studied for two AP exams, my first being the computer science principles exam in my freshman year, and I got a four on that one. And then my second one was the AP psychology exam that I took in my junior year, and I got a five on that one. So now moving on to my honors, which is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. I also tried to clump as many honors as I could together, so just bear with me. I have them on my laptop so I can read off my laptop. My first honor was being in the Cum Laude Society, which is the top 10% of your junior class and getting named as a National Merit Commended Scholar for my PSAT score. My second was getting a couple gold and bronze Presidential Volunteer Service Awards, as well as the Gold Congressional Award. My third was being a Speech and Debate National Qualifier and Attendee. My fourth was being a host of state qualifier and attendee. And then my fifth was getting the University of Rochester Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony Award, which is presented at our end of year book awards in junior year. And finally, for my extracurriculars, which I think are the most robust part of my application, simply because I spent so much time on them. So again, have my laptop here, just gonna read off my laptop. Just wanted to say that there were a lot of activities that I couldn't manage to fit on my standard Common App activities list, like playing competitive tennis, babysitting, working, and being a member of different clubs at my school. So instead of trying to cram everything on there, I instead put all of my activities onto a resume and submitted that resume to all of my colleges that I applied to. I also tried to elaborate on some of my activities and my supplemental essays where I saw fit and where it was appropriate. 
The first one that I put on my Common App was being a research intern at my local university over the summer. It was super, super fun, and I got to study bacterial virulence, present my findings, and then write part of a paper that's currently being modified for publication. The second one was shadowing and interning at healthcare offices, which I did a bunch. So I helped with patient triage and learn how to interpret diagnostic results in film, which was also super interesting and really prepared me for the fact that I wanted to enter the medical field. My third one was writing an independent review article on the impacts of blue light on human health, which I submitted for publication. And if you guys want some more info about how I did that and how I picked my topic, I'd love to make a mini video about that too. My fourth one was being the founder and president of our school's Science National Honor Society chapter, as well as a president of our HOSA chapter, which kind of just showed a lot of leadership and planning skills. My fifth one was speech and debate. I was also the speech president and coached two medalists at the national level. Uh, I myself was the speech champion and competed at the national level as well. Number six was just a lot of my violin stuff. I was a concert master in a couple orchestras and performed in a lot of different ensembles. My seventh one was being in a group that created three bills to advocate for foster care children across the nation. So we were able to fly up to DC and meet with Congress people and explain what we were lobbying for. My eighth was being the editor-in-chief for my school newspaper before it got shut down for funding reasons, and then starting the school blog, as well as being an editor on a youth science publication journal. Ninth was basically doing my own volunteer work, so I hosted book drives and donated all the books to prisons across America. I kind of lumped that in with volunteering at a cancer facility and training cancer therapy dogs, so a lot in that one. And finally, my tenth was being the lead ambassador and speaker at my school. I basically just gave tours to prospective families and trained younger ambassadors at my school as well. So those were my stats and extracurriculars. I hope you found the video at least a little bit helpful when you're applying to college and going through the whole process. Let me know if I should make a SAT and ACT tips video because I'd be more than happy to make one. And then maybe how I got my research opportunity or how I decided to do my own independent research as well. Also, ordering things on Common App is a big deal. So if you want me to explain that one as well, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and hope to see you in another video.